Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. We're going to talk about digital audio formats. This is important to know because if you're buying an audio interface, these are ways that you can upgrade how many inputs and outputs it has. Or if your interface already has digital connectivity, then you might be able to buy an external converter and hook it up to get more inputs and outputs. So I'm going to talk a little bit about digital audio and the connectivity so you can understand how to connect all these different pieces of gear so that they play nicely together. Now the main reason digital connectivity has become popular is because an audio interface will only have so many channels that it's capable of. For instance, right here in front of me I have the Focusrite 18i20. So it's capable of 18 inputs, but it's not capable of 18 inputs all on its own. See, on its own, it's only capable of 8 inputs. See, it has 8 preamps and 8 channels of A to D conversion, and that's it. If I want to tap into those other 10 channels that are available on it, I need to buy an external unit which has preamps and conversion, and then send the information that's already turned into digital into the focus right, and it'll show up as more inputs in my DAW. In this example, I have a PreSonus Digimax, which has eight preamps and eight channels of conversion. So it'll convert the eight preamps into the digital information, and then I can send the eight channels of digital information into the focus right interface. Here's how it gets connected. So here we have the back of the PreSonus Digimax 8 channel analog to digital converter, and here we have the back of the Focusrite 18i20 audio interface. So this converter gets hooked up to the interface through an optical ADAT cable. So here's our cable. I'm going to plug it in to the output. And then the other end of the cable gets plugged in to the ADAT input right there. Now, another important part to consider is the word clock. See, if you remember from the digital audio lesson, digital audio consists of snapshots. They take thousands of snapshots every second. Now, the snapshots that the converter takes has to be at the exact same time as the snapshots that the interface takes. So they have to be synchronized together, and we use word clock to do that. Now, word clock can be synchronized over the ADAT cable, but only in the direction that the audio flows. So right now, the audio flows from the converter into the interface. So we could use the converter as the master clock and synchronize the interface's clock to the converter's clock. But what I want to do is use the Focusrite interface as the master clock. Now, since the word clock can only go the direction of the audio through the ADAT cable, the only way to get word clock from the interface into this converter is to use what's called a word clock cable. So here's my word clock cable. Now, I'm going to plug it into the word clock output of the interface. And into the word clock input of the converter. And on the converter front panel, I would select external clock as the clock source. Now with that selected, it'll automatically receive the word clock information from the word clock input, which is being provided from the interface. So now it's all connected up and I'm going to use this microphone. I've got an ISK ICDM and I'm just going to plug it into the channels one at a time within the DAW to show you input coming into the 16 channels that are available. So if I plug it into channel one, there you go, you can see the input. And I'll plug it in the back into channel number six. There we go, channel six, you can see the input. So far I've only used the basic inputs of the focus right. So now I'm gonna plug it into the back of the Digimax. I'm gonna plug it into channel one of the PreSonus Digimax. And there we go, see that shows up as channel nine. And if I plug it into channel five, That shows up as audio 13. I'll scroll down a little here. And if I plug it into channel 8 on the back of here, there we go. That shows up as channel 16. So I can have up to 16 inputs simultaneously with this setup. Now the cable that I use to hook up the PreSonus Digimax to the Focusrite 18i20 interface is called an optical toslink cable. And it looks like this. Now, this transmits light. 
literally light goes through this cable and into the receiving unit. And that light carries with it the digital information of the various channels of audio. Now the cable is called an optical toss link, but the digital protocol that's used is called ADAT, A-D-A-T. One optical cable using the ADAT protocol is capable of transferring eight channels of digital audio at one time sample rate. So if you remember from the lesson on digital audio, one time sample rate is either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. Now, if you want to have audio of two times sample rate, which is 88.2 kilohertz or 96 kilohertz, that's twice as much information that needs to stream down the cable. Therefore, it's only capable of half as many channels. So at two times sample rate, it's only capable of carrying four channels of digital audio. And not that there would ever be any point in recording at four times sample rate, but if ever you are, it's capable of carrying two channels of digital audio. So here's what the Focusrite 18i20 looks like on the front panel, and here's the back panel. So here's our optical connections. We have an out and an in. I plugged the optical cable from the PreSonus Digimax into the in on the Focusrite. But if I wanted more output channels, I could send eight channels out digitally through the ADAT output here into a digital to analog converter. Now right here is the SPDIF connections. I call it SPDIF. It's SPDIF stands for Sony Philips Digital Interface. You don't need to know that. But anyways, um, each connector is capable of two channels of audio. So we have two channels of digital audio coming in and it's capable of sending two channels of digital audio out. The SPDIF protocol simply uses an RCA cable. And you might have a keyboard or something that has a SPDIF output, so you would just plug that into the output, plug the other end into the SPDIF input of the interface, and it'll show up as two more channels of audio coming in. Another common way of transferring digital audio is through the AES-EVU protocol. This protocol uses an XLR cable to transfer two channels of digital audio at any sample rate. So sometimes if an interface only has two or say four channels of digital audio, it might simply have an XLR connector at the back of the interface for the AES EVU. But quite often it's used in banks of eight channels at a time. And to save space and to save XLR connectors, what they'll do is simply use a DB25 connector. This here is a DB25 connector. It's called that because it has 25 wires running through it. Now one of those wires actually doesn't get used, so there's 24 wires really that's being used. Now we remember that an XLR cable has three wires in it, so 24 divided by 3 is 8. So a DB25 connector is capable of having a breakout of 8 XLR cables. Now since each XLR cable can carry two channels of digital audio, one DB25 connector is capable of 16 channels of digital audio. Let's take a look at this Motu 112D interface. This interface doesn't have any analog inputs or outputs, it's all digital connectivity. So it's capable of 24 inputs and 24 outputs of strictly digital. If we take a look at our AES EBU options, here's channels one to eight in and out, channels nine to 16 in and out, and channels 17 to 24 in and out. So it's capable of 24 inputs and 24 outputs all simultaneously. Now let's take a look at the ADAT. This is where it gets a little bit more confusing. It's still capable of 24 inputs and outputs at up to two times sample rate, but in order to use those 24 inputs and outputs at two times sample rate, you would need 12 optical cables to run the signals. And if you were using it at one time sample rate, so 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, then you would need six optical cables. Let's take a look here. So if you're at one time sample rate, so 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, you have your channels one to eight in and out right here, channels nine to 16 in and out right here, channels 17 to 24 in and out right there, and there's your three. But if you're using two times sample rate, so 88.2 or 96 kilohertz, then it's the numbers that are in blue. Remember the ADAT protocol through the optical cable can only carry half as many channels at twice the sample rate. So channels one to four in and out would be right here from this bank. Channels five to eight in and out are right here in this bank. Channels 9 to 12 are right here on this bank. You can see it in blue there. Channels 13 to 16 are right here in this bank. Channels 17 to 20 are right here in this bank. And channels 21 to 24 are right here in this bank. Now let's take a look at another example here. I have a Metric Halo ULN8, which is an audio interface. And this is actually the interface that I use in my own recording system. And let's take a look at how to connect it to an RME ADI-8. And this is an eight channel A to D and D to A converter. 
And if you don't know what an ADDA converter is, then you need to check out my lesson on digital audio. This is the front panel and this is the back panel. And on the ADI-8, this is the front panel and this is the back panel. So I can add eight more channels of inputs to this interface through this converter by going with these analog inputs right here. And I would plug in a DB25 breakout cable that breaks out into eight XLRs, or I've got eight line inputs right here. And I would use those eight inputs to supply this converter with the eight channels of audio. And this will convert those eight channels into digital. And through the AES EBU here, I would go from that AES EBU into the AES input on the ULN8. And if I wanted to get eight more outputs from my interface, I could connect it from the AES IO 1 to 8, this DB25 connector into this DB25 connector of the ADI converter and send my outputs from there to there. And that'll convert them into an analog output. And I have access to them right here on these quarter inch outputs. Now, if my interface did not have the AES protocol, this particular converter also has ADAT inputs and outputs. So you would use the main one, there's your main out, there's your main in, for channels one to eight if you're at one time sample rate. But if you're at two times sample rate, then the main one will give you channels one to four, and then this auxiliary one would give you channels five to eight. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you liked this video, please do me a huge favor, high five that like button down there, and go have an awesome day.